Welcome to Davin's Random. Today I'm going to install some headers. So these are eBay headers. But what I discovered was uh, bugging a lot of people in the BMW Z3 forums. A lot of them really like the Schmiedman headers. These are not Schmiedman. So Schmiedman is probably the best header you can put on a Z3. These are Schmiedman like off of eBay. So yeah, build quality is actually not too bad. The difference between these and the Schmiedmans is that the Schmiedmans on the top are welded all the way around. These are tacked in place on the top, but then welded all the way around on the inside. Uh, the tubing itself looks to be just a hair larger than whatever's being used on the Schmiedmans. Comes with a uh, O2 bung. The uh, flanges are fixed. Comes with gasket, uh, exhaust manifold gaskets, the top part of the downpipe. So this actually has to be welded. From what I understand, like the Schmiedman was hands down the best setup that you could possibly put on the Z3. But anyway, the Schmiedmans are, you know, all tested, calculated, engineered to death, and these are just copies. But the reason why I bought the copies was a lot of people uh, in the forums had these and they said they fit great, they bolt right in, there's no issues. Uh, the only thing that's going to happen is you can see where these go together, there's no uh, air pump. So, you know, the air pump's going to be deleted from it. Here in Arizona, that is actually okay. Here, the emissions restrictions are based around uh, having a catalytic converter and no engine check codes. But the Schmiedman headers are, I want to say like, with shipping it was like less than 400 bucks. So if you want to get a really good header, that's what I would get. But these eBay headers were like 160. But still, this is way better than when I had my Z3 Coupe. The headers for that, I want to say, were like $1,600. So, yeah, there you go. But anyway, let's go ahead and put these on. So right here is the uh, the air pump solenoid valve, so that has to be unbolted. On each exhaust manifold, there should be 12 bolts that have to be undone that are 10 millimeter. They're all undone from underneath here. This has to be unbolted from here. And then looking back, those have to be unbolted so you can drop down uh, the main pipe Coming back to you from the bottom side of the car, the first thing I did was undo these flange nuts, and these are 15 millimeter. Not a big deal, but I just want to make a mental note that this one up here, if you can see where my finger's at, uh, that one had a 16 millimeter bolt going through it to a 15 millimeter nut. A little bit of a pickle, but other than that, it wasn't too bad. Anyway, now I got to do undo the brackets. So it's just this bolt right here, 13 millimeter and 13 millimeter right there. And then that'll drop that bracket and then undo that flange, O2 sensors, and this thing comes out. I don't even know why I didn't think of it, but this brace, this big brace that goes across here also has to come out. I uh, got the uh, mid pipe with the cat removed and just unplug the O2 sensors. You don't actually have to unscrew them. So that was nice. So I want to give you a quick update. I'm unbolting these. These are 11 millimeter, not 12. And there's, if you see where my finger is, right there, there is one bolt that is down, sandwiched in this pipe. That is going to be a, not very delightful bolt to get out. That's the one that's most challenging. Now the other thing that I was running into too is some of these are coming out with the studs. Not really a big deal. I mean, I kind of expect it on aluminum block, but yeah, good times. So removing the air pump tube first grants access to that bolt that I couldn't get to. So that was basically all I had to do. Very minor, but uh, the more you know. Ba -da -da -da. Here you go. So I got the old ones out. These are technically tube style manifolds, not really headers, but they look similar to a header. 
Um, but headers have collectors, so that's the biggest thing. It, you know, these are actually, for what they are, designed pretty well. So, you know, don't feel bad if you want to leave these on there and not do headers. But, uh, I don't know, I just figured, what the heck, why not? I'm here, they're cheap, let's do it. So, I'm going to start putting these back in. I'm mocking everything up, and it looks like everything's fitting. So it's a new day, and last night I fought with getting all of these header bolts in. The, the distance varies on everything, so just trying to get the right wrench in there is really tricky. Torque spec wise, just as tight as you can get it with a short wrench is probably where it should be, so maybe somewhere around 15 foot-pounds. They're 11 millimeter bolts, so they can't be tore down too much. It took me four hours to bolt this thing in, which was not fun. Now we're ready to uh, put the mid pipe back on, so let's start measuring that. And I think the easiest way to do it is going to be to measure the distance from this bracket to here, and let's add two inches to make sure that we got enough collar. So this is about five inches here. This one's going to be probably about three and a half. So this was insanely hard to cut through. The reason why is it's double piped. So this one's just press fit in. These are just for kind of a heat shield. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe get some adapters to slide over that because this is literally the same tubing that's on the headers. That's a lot of gap. So we're going to need some sort of an adapter to basically adapt these two together. So I've got this other piece here. Quick uh Quick run to O'Reilly, and that will let me know what I need for that. Another interesting development. These are not the same pipe. Even though this outer pipe was acted like a shield, you can see up here where it was pinched, that's just where it's holding this pipe in. So these are not necessary. I'm just going to adapt directly to these. But wow, that was, that was unusual whatever anyway make sure that you clean this thing out really good you don't want um, shavings to get into the catalytic converter all right let me show you what I'm doing here so right now the cat back is back on its hangers and it's not actually held up by this jack the jack is just sitting below this anyway I bolted it back up tight at the collar to make sure that this thing was in place put the mid pipe back in the bracket and tighten this all the way down and then I had to go in before I did this and trim off about three inches on this pipe to be able to add this adapter that I picked up from O'Reilly yeah basically just this one side needs an adapter because this type pipe is much bigger than this one so and these are equal sizes so you know whatever it takes to make it fit I bolted these pipes down they're not tightened all the way but they are pretty firm there's just a touch of play uh, that way I can get these perfectly lined up before I weld them and basically what I'm going to do now is now you can see what the joint looks like uh, I'm just going to spot weld here and then drop this whole thing down and weld it all the way up as far as how these pipes fit the inside pipe, this one actually fits pretty good. This outside pipe, it's kind of weird. So what you have to be careful of is right here. And it's like, it almost wants to hit the side of the transmission. So you gotta kind of wiggle it so it's off to the side. Right now there's probably a sixteenth of an inch or like two, two and a half millimeters of gap right there, which is not much. I think it'll flow just fine, but it's time to spot weld it and then I gotta unbolt the whole thing again, put it on the bench and weld it up and then put it back in. Well, there you have it, some more mediocre welds, but at least now uh, the whole thing is ready to go back in and now it's pretty much complete. So, time to reinstall it. 
So just when you think you're done, you're not actually done. So now I have to remove the air pump. It just depends on what state you're in and what the emissions compliance are. Here in Arizona, uh, air pumps are not a requirement, especially on a car this old. Uh, really, it's um, PCV and catalytic converter here. Those are the two main things that you really need to have. But each state has different rules, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so basically, what I bought, this was $70 and it was from Dimmer World and it's an air pump simulator and so this wires into this harness and then this plugs in I believe to where the pump plugs in and then this just mounts somewhere on the firewall and then uh, that will allow us to set it up so what we're gonna have to do is remove this air pump and then the hose that comes down here and then this vacuum line hooks up to a metal line oh this is designed for the m52 and s52 engines only just so you know so it was literally designed for this but anyway uh, this vacuum line comes out here you can see it there with the blue line on it and then we gotta um, either plug it off or see where that connects to probably to the t down there well, an interesting predicament developed, and uh, basically, according to the directions to hook up the simulator, there's supposed to be O2 sensor um, wire connections here on the rail. But, if you noticed when I did the install, I have no forward O2 sensors on this car. So, what do I hook this into? Hmm. So I just did the first startup, and uh, it didn't throw a check light or anything, so I guess it's fine. I'm not really sure. So anyway, this uh, switch right here is actually the vacuum port switch that pulls off of the diaphragm that's on the uh, EGR valve that draws the air in. This is an electronic uh, vacuum that runs for about 60 seconds during your first startup or if the car is cold. So I tested this with the car warm starting it back up and this didn't draw a vacuum. But when it's cold it draws a vacuum for one minute. Feel free to leave comments because you know I'm really not sure how I want to approach this. I can't find any information on it in the forums. I've spent probably four or five hours looking in the forums trying to figure out what I was going to do with this and nobody talks about it so I think ultimately it might be okay to leave the vacuum hose off of this and let it just breathe because at first 60 seconds it might be more ideal to create a slightly lean condition because that's when your car is running at its richest probably healthier for the catalytic converter if you want to extend the life of it that's my guess right off the top of my head so if you think otherwise, let me know in the comments. Um, I'd be curious to see what you say about that, but I'm going to leave this pretty much just tucked under back here where it was for right now. Uh, this vacuum line right here is the one that's tied up to the metal one that goes underneath. I'm just going to pull this off and leave that metal one on there until I change the thermostat again and then I'll take the metal line off. Well, everything changes, so now I don't even need this in. So it turns out uh, these older 2.8 liters, and this one's a 97, if you don't have O2 sensors on the exhaust manifolds to begin with, most likely that's just being simulated in the ECU, and then the air pump isn't even tied into the ECU. It's just kind of an aftermarket thought. So I can actually just run this without an air pump. Don't have to worry about it.
not a huge amount. I still, I don't know if this is like a super important upgrade to do headers over the factory manifolds, but uh, it does seem to make it a little smoother and a little nicer, and it was fairly inexpensive to do. You know, we're talking 160 bucks, so it wasn't like a big deal. Um, time consuming, yes. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind. It is definitely time consuming. Sorry for the bumpy road. But, um, yeah. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. And give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my channel for more weird information like this. And we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.